guess what? This is video number 50 for me. So a big congrats to me. Let's talk about something that's been bothering me for a while now. Every company, and I mean every company, is slapping AI powered onto their product description like it's a magic spell that'll make us throw money at them. So your toaster, that's AI powered. Your refrigerator, that's AI enabled. That app that literally just saves your shopping list, yeah, that's AI driven. But here's the thing, most of them, in fact, almost all of them, they're lying to you. Or at best, they're being incredibly misleading on what AI actually is. And I think it's time we just we break down what's really going on here. Let's start with the basics. And this is where most of the deception happens. There are three distinct things that companies love to muddle together. Automation, machine learning, and actual AI intelligence. And trust me, they're counting on you not knowing the difference. Let's start with automation. Automation is the oldest trick in the book. And it's basically just if then, then else statements on steroids. You know, if this happens, do that. If the temperature reaches 350 degrees, turn off the oven. If someone clicks this button, send this email. If it's 6 a.m., start the coffee maker. So your dishwasher, that's automation. It's running a predetermined sequence of events. You know, rinse, wash, rinse again, dry. The same thing every single time. But now companies call it smart or AI powered because it can connect to your Wi-Fi and you can start it from your phone. And that's not AI, that's, that's automation with an internet connection. Here's a real example that just drives me crazy. You know those automated email responses? You know the ones. You send a support ticket and you instantly get back, you know, thank you for contacting us. A representative will respond within 20 to 48 hours. You know, some companies are now marketing these things as AI customer service, and it's not. It's a script trigger, automation that's been around since the early 2000s. It's just rebranded. now. Machine learning is where things get a little bit more interesting. And honestly, this is where most of what we call AI actually today lives. So machine learning is when you feed a system a ton of data and it learns to recognize patterns. It doesn't follow predetermined rules. It creates its own rules based on what it observes. So let me give you a real world example. Um, Netflix recommendations. They're not sitting there with a flow chart that says, you know, if this person likes action movies, recommend this specific list. Instead, they feed the system data on millions of viewing habits and you know, the system systems learned that people watch certain shows tend to watch the same shows over and over. It found patterns that humans might never have noticed. Or think about spam filters. You know, in the early days, spam filters were automation. They looked for specific words like Nigerian prince or enlarge your whatever. You know, and spammers would just change the wording and then boom, the filter was defeated. You know, modern spam filters use machine learning. They've analyzed millions of emails that were marketed as spam and millions marketed as legitimate. And they learned what spam looks like even when the exact words change. Uh, they adapt. So here's where it gets really tricky though. Machine learning isn't really intelligent in the way that we think about intelligence. Like it's a pattern matching on a massive scale. It can't think. It can't reason. It can't understand. It just recognizes patterns really, really well. So I'll use an example of my own work. So a few years ago, I worked with a company that wanted to sort customer reviews. So they marketed it as this AI sentiment analysis, but really it was a machine learning model trained on thousands of reviews labeled as positive or negative. It learned what reviews with words like amazing and perfect were actually positive while reviews with terrible and broken were actually negative. So was it useful? Absolutely. Is it artificial intelligence? Not really. So the real AI, and I'm talking about what we call artificial general intelligence, or like AGI, it doesn't exist yet. This would be a system that can actually think and reason and understand context, like learn new things without being explicitly trained on them and apply knowledge across different domains. So the closest thing we have to that right now are what we call large language models. And I'll get into that for a minute, but even those aren't truly intelligent in the way humans are intelligent. You know, they're incredibly sophisticated pattern matchers that can mimic intelligence so well, it's often hard to tell the difference. So when a company tells you their product is AI powered, they usually mean one of three things. It's automation with good marketing, it's machine learning that found some patterns in data, or in rare cases, they're actually using modern generative AI models. And that brings us to the next part. Generative AI is probably what most people think about when they hear AI today. And it's honestly the thing that's actually living up to some of the hype. So this is your chat GPTs or your mid journey image generators. These are your AI video tools. So the keyword here is generative. 
these systems generate new content. They don't just recognize patterns or follow predetermined paths. They create something new based on what they've learned. So let me break it down how it actually works because it's both simpler and more complex than you might think. Like a large language models, like the ones powering JFGPT, Clode, Gemini, Gua, Kimi K2, I can go on. They've been trained on massive amounts of text from the internet, you know, books, articles, websites, conversations, code, like everything. And throughout that training, they've learned something really interesting. They've learned the patterns of language itself. They have learned that when someone says the capital of France is, the next word is probably Paris, but they've also learned much more complex patterns. They've learned how arguments are structured, how code function works together, how to explain complex ideas simply, how jokes are constructed, even how different writing styles feel. So last month, I was working on this tech document project that was already weeks behind schedule. So normally I'd spend hours writing draft after draft, trying to make complex technical concepts accessible to non-technical users. But instead I used a generative AI tool. I gave the technical specifications and I asked it to explain to them like I was talking to a small business owner who just needed to understand the basics. And here's the thing. It didn't just pull up some pre-written explanation from training data. It generated new text combining what it learned about technical writing, about about explaining complex concepts, about what small business owners typically need to know. And was it perfect? No. I had to edit it, fact check it, adjust the tone, but it cut my work time in half. Think about AI image generation. Tools like Midjourney or Dolly don't have a database of images that they're pulling from. They've learned what different objects look like, how they're typically composed, what different art styles look like, and then how lighting works, perspective, and then color theory. Then when you ask for a steampunk cat riding a bicycle on Mars, it generates something completely new by combining all those learned patterns. But here's what companies don't want you to understand. These systems are not truly intelligent. They're phenomenally good at pattern recognition and reproduction. They can combine concepts in novel ways. They can sometimes seem like they're reasoning or understanding, but they're essentially very sophisticated autocomplete systems. So I'll give you an example of where this breaks down. Um, a friend of mine asked ChatGPT to help him plan a hiking trip. It gave him a detailed itinerary, recommended gear, even suggested a good photography spot too. You know, everything looked perfect, except when he actually tried to follow the route, he discovered that the two trails it recommended didn't actually exist. And one of the camping spots was on private property. So the AI learned what the hiking trip plan looked like. It knew what kind of language it used, the format of the itineraries, the type of gear that got recommended, but didn't actually know the specific specific trails. So it generated a plausible sounding content based on patterns, not actual knowledge. So this is why when companies say that their product has AI, you need to ask, is this just generating plausible content based on patterns or does it actually have access to real verified data? Most of the time, it's the former dressed up as the latter. Another real world example, AI legal documents. You know, several companies now offer AI powered contract generation. They can generate contracts that look legally sound, use the right terminology and have the right structure. But lawyers have found numerous cases where these AI generated contracts have subtle errors that could be catastrophic. You know, the AI learned what contracts look like, but it doesn't understand the law the way a trained attorney does. Now, before we get to how to actually use all this stuff effectively, we need to talk about the newest buzzword that companies are just throwing around and that one is AI agents and oh boy is there a lot of confusion about what this actually means. AI agent is supposed to be an AI system that can act autonomously and complete tasks not just answer questions or generate content but actually do things like take actions make decisions walk towards goals without having you hold its hand through every single step and so think of it this way Generative AI is like having a really smart assistant who can write anything you ask for. An AI agent is like having an assistant who can figure out what needs to be written, research the topic, write it, edit, format it, and send it to the right people, all while you're doing something else. So let me give you another example because I'm just full of examples. There's a company that's called Zapier that recently launched AI agents for workflow automation. Here's how it works in theory. Instead of you manually setting up this happens, do that rules, you tell the agent, I need customer feedback from our support tickets summarized and sent to the product team every Friday. The agent is supposed to figure out how to assess the tickets, 
what counts as feedback, how to summarize it, and who the product team is, and then actually do it every week. That's the difference from traditional automation because you're not programming every single step, you're giving it a goal and it figures out the steps. At least that's the promise. But here's where companies are being misleading again. Most AI agents today are really generative AI with some extra scripting bolted on. You know, they can do a sequence of actions, but they're not truly autonomous or intelligent about it. So I'll tell you another frustrating experience I had last month. So a popular project management tool added AI agent capabilities. You know, they advertised it as being able to manage your projects automatically, update statuses, assign tasks, send reminders, you know, the works. And I thought, yes, great. This is gonna save me hours. What it actually did was generate plausible sounding task descriptions and randomly assign them to team members based on who had been assigned similar sounding tasks before. It had no understanding of people's actual workload, skills, or availability. It marked tasks as complete when it saw certain keywords and comments, even if the work wasn't actually done. And so within two days, my team was more confused before than we started. It wasn't an agent. It was making guesses about what an agent would do with no real ability to verify its actions or course correct. Real AI agents, the ones that actually work, are being built right now, but they're more limited and specific than the marketing suggests. So Google's DeepMind created an agent that can play Stratego at a championship level, and that's impressive but it can only play Stratego. It can't suddenly decide to play chess or help you with your taxes. OpenAI has been testing AI agents that can browse the web and use tools to complete tasks. And I've seen demos where you ask it to research competitors and build a comparison spreadsheet, and it actually goes out searches multiple websites, extracts information, and builds the spreadsheet, and that's closer to a true agent. But here's the thing again, even those more advanced agents fail constantly. They get stuck in loops, they make wrong assumptions, they pursue irrelevant information, or they just give up. They need constant supervision. Like a startup I know tried using an AI agent to handle their social media scheduling, and it posted three times in one hour because it thought the posts hadn't gone through. They didn't post for a week because it decided the content wasn't engaging enough based on criteria nobody asked it to use. The real challenge with AI agents is trust. With generative AI, you see the output before anything happens. You review it, you edit it, you decide whether you want to use it. You're with an agent, it's taking actions in the real world before you see the results. That's power powerful, but it's also risky. I'm full of examples, so I'm gonna give some more. So here's an example that went viral a few months ago. Someone set up an AI agent to manage their email inbox, you know, archive spam, flag important messages, draft responses. It sounds great, right? Except the agent decided that a contract deadline extension from a major client was spam because it came from a new address and it had a suspicious language about changing dates. So it archived the email and the person almost missed like a critical deadline. So when companies tell you that they have AI agents, you got to really ask them, what exactly can it do without supervision? What happens when it makes a mistake? Can I review actions before they're taken? And how does it handle unexpected situations? And you know, most of the time, you'll find out it's generative AI with some predetermined actions it can trigger, which is really just fancy automation. You know, the future of AI agents is probably exciting. Like imagine having a digital assistant that can handle your calendar, book travel, manage routine emails, do research, and you know, update your work systems without you babysitting it. But we're not there yet, despite what the marketing says. So this is what, I I think is a game changer, but like it's a band-aid game changer, something like that. Let's just call it a game changer for right now. And that is contextual engineering. And so now this is where things get really interesting. And it's something most people don't understand yet. And that's contextual engineering. It's also called prompt engineering. It's the art and science of working with AI systems effectively, and it's becoming one of the most valuable skills in the modern workplace. So you see, generative AI systems are only as good as what you tell them. The same AI model can give you garbage results or brilliant results, depending on how you interact with it. And that's what contextual engineering is all about. It's crafting the right inputs to get the right outputs. Say you ask Chappie GPT, write me an email. You'll get a generic, bland email that sounds like it was written by a robot, you know, trying to pass as human. It might be grammatically correct, but it's useless. But if you ask, write an email to a long-term client explaining a two-week project delay due to unexpected technical challenges, maintain a professional but warm tone, 
take responsibility without over apologizing, provide a specific new timeline and offer a small discount at Goodwill. The client is in healthcare, risk average and values transparency. Now you're gonna get something actually useful. And that's context engineering. You're not just asking the AI to do something, you're providing context, constraints, style guidelines, audience information, desired outcome. You're engineering the input to engineer the output. And so here's the real story. Here's a real story from a startup I consulted with a few years ago. So they were using AI to generate product descriptions for their e-commerce site. You know, at first they just fed the product specs and said, write a description. And the results were technically accurate, but completely flat. You know, no personality, no persuasion, nothing that would make someone want to buy. Then we rebuilt their prompts. We gave the AI context about their target customer, environmentally conscious millennials who value sustainability, but also want style. We told the brand the voice, the upbeat, informative, slightly irrelevant type they were looking for. We provided examples of their best performing descriptions. We specified the structure. We start with the problem. This product solves, highlight key features, end with an emotional appeal. Same AI, completely different results. And their conversion rates on new product pages, it increased 23%, like over three months. That's amazing. And that's the power of contextual engineering, or I'm just going to start calling it context engineering. But here's what most companies selling AI solutions don't tell you. This requires skill. It requires understanding your domain, understanding the AI's capabilities and limitations, and understanding how to bridge that gap. It's not magic. It's a craft. I've been working with um, AI coding assistants like GitHub and Copilot. And if I just let it auto-complete my code without any guidance, I get generic solutions that might work, but aren't completely optimized for my specific use case. But if I write detailed comments explaining what I need, why I need it, what edge cases to consider, and what performance constraints matter, the AI generates much better code. You know, same with AI image generation. An amateur might just type a dragon and get a disappointed result. Someone skilled in context engineering would write a photorealistic European dragon with emerald scales perched on a medieval castle at sunset. Dramatic lighting to the left, shallow depth of field, shot on an 85 millimeter lens, inspired by Game of Thrones cinematography. Completely, completely different outcome. The dirty secret of AI is that it's not about the AI replacing you, it's about learning to use the AI as a tool to amplify your own expertise. The people succeeding with AI aren't the ones just pressing a button and hoping for magic. They're the ones who understand their craft deeply enough to guide the AI effectively. Here's what big companies don't want you to know, that most AI powered products are just automation with better marketing. Some are machine learning systems that found patterns and data useful, but not revolutionary. A smaller number are actually using generative AI, which is impressive, but still has major limitations. And the real power of modern AI isn't the technology itself. It's how you use it. Context engineering and understanding how to work with these systems, that's where the actual value is. But companies can't sell you that. They can't package learning to use AI effectively in a neat little subscription box. They just want you to think AI is magic, that you just sprinkle some AI dust on your problems and everything gets better. But it's not magic, it's a tool. Powerful tool, sure, an extremely sophisticated tool, but still just a tool that requires skills to use effectively. You know, when someone tries to sell you an AI solution, you really gotta ask them, is this automation, machine learning, or generative AI? What problem is this actually solving? And then what are its limitations? Like what role does human expertise play? And if they can't answer these questions clearly, they're probably lying to you about what they're actually offering. You know, this AI revolution is real, but it's not what the marketing departments want you to believe. It's not about about AI replacing humans or making everything effortless. It's about humans learning to collaborate with sophisticated pattern matching systems to do things we couldn't have done before. And honestly, that's more exciting than the fantasy that they're selling anyways.